Hello and welcome to the program. Canada's election observation mission to Ukraine. Canada said that the presidential elections in Ukraine were free and fair. Uh, the mission observed candidate and voter registration, campaign activities, uh, the media and information environment, as well as the adjudication of election related disputes. Now, I'm pleased to say to talk more about their assessment and the elections transparency, we are joined in the studio today by Olya Odinska Grod the Deputy Head of the Mission Canada 2019. Hello, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for inviting. So before we talk a bit more about uh, your findings, can you tell me a bit about your mission itself? The um, Canada mission uh, represents obviously the um, people of Canada and um, we are a bilateral mission. We are uh, 160 strong, so we've had 50 long-term observers on the ground since early February, and they were uh, accompanied by uh, 110 that arrived just prior to the election. So it's 160 people. They have now had um, an opportunity to have a debrief mm -hmm. and have left Canada. And when, if and when, the call is, is made for the uh, second round, they will return. And can you tell us a bit about your findings? Because you've already um, had the debrief. So what were your main findings after the first round of the presidential elections? Um, the findings were quite across the board um, that everyone felt that at the PEC level, everyone was prepared for the elections, that they had taken the training, that the procedures unfolded as they should do. Uh, we attended around, I think, 75 openings of PECs mm -hmm. across, in all Near of the polling the, stations. At the polling yeah. stations across the various regions. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada had observers in every region of Ukraine where elections were being held. So that that was um, quite a, a nice broad spectrum and yeah. could make some findings and uh, the people seemed prepared, knowledgeable, um, there, everything was orderly, peaceful and the elections were went forward as one would expect them to do so. Yes, and um, you're the organization that you represent, you don't just have observers uh, coming to Ukraine, but Canada also has observers around the world, and this is an important yes. fact as well. It is very much so. Canada uh, observes in over 40 countries of the world, and um, many people often think that we've come just to Ukraine, and we get asked that question often at the um, various visits that we have, because we meet, of course, with uh, the, the um, precinct offices well in advance and the district offices. We meet with local police, we meet with organizations of civil society such as Opora mm. and others. And the question always is, you know, are we doing something wrong that you've come here? And of course, that's not the issue at all. Yes, and you give them feedback, but yes. also you can take feedback home as well. We do, and and we watch how things unfold here. They're very, um, they're, there's always some learning. Mm. You, you know, we have a particular process in Canada, but it doesn't mean it's it's perfect. And it certainly means that there's things that we can learn from. And in fact, um, Dr. Axworthy, our uh, head of mission, made that comment mm. at, uh, I think in Irpin, he made the comment that um, it, you know, the mobile little ballot boxes for the very elderly or the very ill is not a bad idea. And, and you don't have this in Canada? We do not. Oh, you don't? Okay. No, but we do have something, uh, we have advanced polling, mm. which is not done in Ukraine. So there's always some sharing, some learning back and forth. So these types of observation missions um, help to um, develop democracy around the world. Yes, and you weren't just observing the election day itself, but also you were observing uh, some of the campaign rallies and, and that yes. sort of thing. What were you looking out for exactly? Um, looking out for fairness, looking out to, to see what is the rhetoric. Um, we observed over 45 rallies across the country and um, I, I think that probably met with over 189 different candidate groups. I know that our core team met, had over 100 meetings in a short while with uh, the different civil society groups, etc. So yes, we're looking for, um, you know, is the media monitoring, you know, we have a media monitor analyst who looks at, you know, what's being set out there. Is everyone getting a chance freely and fairly to say what they want to say? Um, are there any barriers? And, you know, the only barrier that I can say we honestly have seen, and I don't know that barrier is the right word, but we definitely observed um, a great number of women involved in the actual um, process 
um, at the precinct and the district level. Mm. Where we did not see a great deal of women involved was as candidates, yes. because only four out of the original 44 were women. Mm. And um, we would like to encourage um, women to get more involved at that level. And we certainly are very proud of the fact that in Canada, 50% of our parliament is women. Um, I'd like to talk a bit more about that in a second, but sure. you said that um, you're involved in the uh, district and sort of the lower levels, but what about the Central Election Commission and your work with them? Because during the election campaign, I've seen perhaps on social media, they've been very transparent about their work. They were giving hourly or bi-hourly updates about uh, what was happening and the different violations. They held different press conferences throughout the day as well. So um, what do you think about their work and how this election was conducted in general? and how open they've been? I would say they've been very, very open. Um, we certainly had um, very engaging, forthright, candid meetings um, with uh, uh, Tatiana Slipachuk and, and her, her um, staff. Uh, I mean, again, there's um, a large proportion of women on that committee, which is very nice to see. Um, all of our communication was very open and free. Um, I love that we can now email back and forth. Yes, yeah. Um, Not it, fill out bureaucratic paperwork absolutely. and wait three weeks for a request. It's very fast. You it's know. very fast and it's also a phone call away. And, mm. and it's a very professional, um, engaged um, interaction. And we welcome them, welcome that very much. Yeah, and there was also high security to get into that building as well because um, we were there on the Sunday of the election, and yes. uh, you had the national guard, you had the police, you had police dogs, and then extra security. Yes. So I was actually quite impressed by that. The well, I, I think that they took the precautions that they should take. Um, you know, our meetings with uh, the police certainly indicated to us that they would be out in full force, and they were. And um, I, I would commend the police for their. Um, reserved position you know they're it, they're there but mm. to, um in a very calm and unthreatening way mm. and um you know we had a, a wonderful meeting with the director of the police mr knyazev and uh who explained you know their philosophy of policing and uh and of course canada has been very involved in um programs in ukraine um of policing yes, of course. and education. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh -huh. that was a really good meeting and, and very informative. And does your organization work at um, Ukrainian embassies and diplomatic missions abroad where there is also voting taking place or was it mainly just in Ukraine? No, Canada worked just in Ukraine yeah. and um, I think that in the other areas the Ukrainian World C Congress um, was involved with um, people that are from Ukraine living in the diaspora, mm. and uh, but we did not observe at embassies. Mm. Um, I'd like to move on and talk about women in politics because I know this is of particular interest to you. And you said that uh, out of the 44 original candidates, there was only four women, right. including Yulia Timoshenko, who came in uh, third place in the end. Um, so what recommendations would you have then, perhaps, um, so that, that more women can be involved at uh, the, the higher levels, not just of the right. uh, presidential race, but in politics in general. Like, we don't see this so much here in Ukraine. No, and, and we don't, and I, I think it will change in, in time. Um, I think that the empowerment of, of, of women to enter politics starts at an early age. And I was um, really impressed with a little book that I bought um, by Babkina, which talks about um, role models for young girls. Mm. and. The, the little booklet really impressed me and I thought, you know, this is exactly where it starts. You know, I can be a politician. I can be president. And that has to um, sort of develop. And it's part of um, civic education. Mm. One of the things that we do in Canada that, that I think is very valuable is uh, we start civics classes in about grade six. And I, I can still remember my classes, mm. um, you know, from some time ago. And I think that that... Um, development from a young age about I can do this or I can be part of this and then the why you know this is my duty this is my privilege this is my honor mm. um, to be engaged in voting and those types of lessons when learned young and through high school and university I think are what will empower women to feel that yes I can be a yeah. candidate. Do you think there should be legislation for this, because uh, maybe you can give an example about Canada, because in Canada uh, they have 50% of women 
They um, do, and, and but is um, that legislation or no, is that not, uh, a party decision? It's to a make party th decision. Um, it's um, it's not legislated, and um, I, I'd like to think, on a personal note, that a woman is chosen because she's the best person for the job, mm. not because she's a woman. Yeah. And so we have to be a little bit careful, perhaps, about gender equality, yeah. um, that that it still be fair. Because this would be the counter argument that, you, of that course. people might have. You know? Yes. Absolutely. No, I think a person should be chosen because they have the qualifications. Yeah. And do you see this in Ukraine? Do you see uh, some civil society organizations involved in empowering women in, in politics? Or is this still something that's perhaps emerging or there's still well, like, strategies well, to be found? Well, I, I think it's definitely happening. Look at, um, you know, your, one of your largest civil, one of the largest civil society groups in Ukraine, of course, is Opora. Mm. And its chair is Olya Abzievska. Yeah. You know, a lovely woman. And uh, so I, I think that the example is there. The the precedent has been set. And so now we just uh, might like to, to see other women follow. Yes. And uh, finally, before we round up, can you uh, tell us about your plans for the second round of the Ukraine presidential elections? Will you stay? And how many observers will be here for the second round? Is it the same amount? Or will you have more? It will more, be the or? same amount. And it mm. will be the same a team by and large. Mm. So our 50 um, long-term observers have remained in the field. Um, they are observing the uh, aftermath of the election, mm. what's in the press, you know, are mm. there, and they're going back to the precinct and district offices to see if there are any complaints, how are those complaints being handled. Mm. And then on um, April the um, 16th, we will be welcoming back our 110 uh, uh, short-term observers, and they will go back to the exact regions where they just were. Mm. And they will now see a different type of election, perhaps, yeah. um, but now with only two candidates, and they can now observe and will have the experience of round one to have um, a fresh set of eyes, perhaps, now on what will happen in round two. And one final, final question. What happens to the report findings once uh, the first round is completely finished and the, the votes are manually counted, and then the second round is done? What happens to your findings? Do they go back to Canada? Are they yeah. advisory? We, we will be publishing another preliminary report of the second round. We will then um, publish a final report, which will be online, shareable to all. It's it's uh, a public document. Okay. And where can people find that later on? Is there it will a be on website? the Canada website. It will mm -hmm. be on the um, Canada Global Affairs website and uh, available to all. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming thank into you. our studio today. It was a pleasure to have you and best of luck with your mission uh, in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. That was Ola Odininska grod the Deputy Head of Mission Canada 2019. Thank you for watching UATV and stay tuned for more.